was a very exciting game. One point win by the Elmwood Giants uh, over uh, the Vincent Massey Trojans. Here we have uh, the Crocus Plains Plainsmen. They're currently uh, ranked uh, number two in uh, the province, uh, going against the uh, number six ranked Tequa Corners. They're the home team. The place is packed. This is with atmosphere. This is what it's all about. Although you talk about the place being packed, once again we see the garbage can lids come back in here, the noise. When the host team is in the final of the tournament, uh, everyone in the crowd seems to get going. Well, definitely in terms of uh, Tech Rock Hornets, as you mentioned, the home team, there are uh, going to be a lot of supporters here looking uh, to see the Hornets win this tournament. They've uh, managed to win uh, the WIT once already. It'd be uh, great for the Hornets right now as uh, they could use this for a springboard uh, to take into the uh, provincial uh, finals in March. Well, we certainly have a great final coming up for you here on DPW, so stay tuned with us all morning. You can see now Crocus Plains went against St. James early, defeated Elmwood to advance to this final. The other end, Tech Block, they started against MBCI, then went against the team of East Glen team and Vincent Massey in the semifinals to come down to this final. So Tech Block, Crocus Plains, first and sixth ranked team in the province. Uh, another battle, great outstanding player, great 10th player on Tech Block. And of course, we saw a couple weeks ago here on VPW the strength of the Crocus Plains team. Well, in terms of uh, the Tech Block Hornets, as we mentioned, currently ranked number six. Uh, they're uh, 15 and 6 uh, overall, 2 and 2 in their league play. Uh, they are definitely, as you get a good look here at the uh, fans still start filing in here to the uh, WIT tournament, they are going to be the uh, hometown favorites. There's no doubt about that. Crocus Plains on the other side of uh, the coin, as you mentioned, we saw them at the uh, Piper Classic and uh, just an excellent group of athletes. Well, we'll join down low here for the singing of O Canada. moment and very well done. We'll get the name of that young lady, but uh, beautiful rendition of O Cannon. We'd be sort of remiss this morning if we didn't quite mention that very proud Canadians here. Laura Campbell, I understand, was the girl who did that. Very proud Canadians of our troops down in the Middle East here, and uh, people here certainly took that to heart, and uh, what a great start to a great final we got coming up. Well, as you mentioned, an excellent start, Blair, and uh, what we'll do now is listen as we have the uh, starting five players introduced from each of the clubs. That's the Crocus Plains Plainsmen, and they're the number one ranked team in the province, and we saw them a couple weeks back as they won the John Taylor, but now the host team, the Tech Bar Hornets. Checkbox Hornets, it's getting hard to hear early as the 
Tech Bach team. It's a loud and warm welcome from their hometown supporters here. Tech Bach and play in their yellow uniforms. And on the other end of the screen, we'll have in the maroon or purple uniforms of the Crocus Plains Plainsmen. We'll pick both of these teams up, and we're just about set to get underway. And I know we got two veteran officials out there today, Laurie. Well, in terms of our two officials, uh, we have Mr. Stephen Kuzbit and Mr. Greg Stepanski. They've been around for a long time. Uh, although they look very young, they started when they were very young. You get a good look at uh, Greg there. Works for the uh, Canadian uh, Postal Service. Is Steve still a milkman? I remember that years ago. I think he's still hanging on. From all walks of life, we're out here in Crocus Plains. Gains possession from the start. Number 21, Cowan gets the ball, and they get it back out to Scott. Scott looks inside. Jason Scott, number four, with a short jumper for two points. It's a good start for Crocus Plains. Jason can really hurt them from out there. Pressure being put on early by Crocus Plains. Pick it up as we go on the screen. Owen Price, 55. They slow things down. Jason Guerrero. That's from the outside. It's a good job by Ferdy. He squares up, looks right at the hoop. Now we've got a turnover by the Crocus Plain Plainsman. Here come the Hornets back. Chris Ostomo picking up the first two points for Tech Block. We're tied at two. And another quick start here. This is the final of the 16th annual WIT. The Tech Block Hornets in possession of the ball right now. Number 23. Vera picks up a three-pointer. Well, for Crocus Plains, you got to stay with Joe. He's the three-point specialist right now in the uh, Winnipeg High School uh, Basketball League, so you've got to make sure that you stay with Joe. Joe Vera, 23, picks up that three-pointer. It's 5-2. Vera now just holds on to it, tries to dish the ball off. It's knocked away, and Crocus Plains pulls down that loose ball. Good start for the Tech Fox Hornets thus far. Scott dishes the ball off to Baker. Baker steps inside and we got a foul. That foul will go on number 15, Derwin Ramirez. Well, if you look at the Crocus Plains Plains when they enjoy a bit of a height advantage, you're going to get a look here as uh, Owen Price going to take the ball down low. There's uh, Joe Vieira all alone, just as we saw in our uh, first game here this morning. You're going to have to recognize who the shooters are, and you've got to stay with them. This is Joe Vieira's home gym. He's going to hit everything in sight, Blair. Derwin Memorial is picking up his first personal foul, the team's first of uh, this half, and at the line to shoot two. Number three, Dwayne Baker. He's successful in the first one, and now he has his second opportunity. Not come through the second, but number 30 is right there. John Williams, and he's rejected. The great uh, block by number 40, Clint Lake for the Tech Block Hornets. Sean Williams, the big man inside for the Plainsman. Number 15, Morris comes up short on that one. And quickly, Crocus Plains back down court. 24, Trevor Penner. They just the ball back out to Williams. Williams drives, pulls up short off the front air and battles for his own boards. Out of bounds, and the ball is back to the Hornets. Tech Block is really going to have to be ready for the transition game. One of the things that we've noticed thus far this season with Crocus Plains is they love transition. Uh, Coach Kearns wants his team to run at all times. Vera has the ball knocked away, picks it up. Inside the lake, lake standing alone, He's waiting for a wall, jumps back out on the fade, and Cowan pulls down the board for the Plainsman. What Clint's going to have to do is he's going to have to go up strong inside there. You can't wait against Crocus Plains. You've got problems down inside with uh, Penner and Sean Williams and Dwayne Baker. Greg Bouchard, a former City All-Star at Daniel Mack, has come over here to Tech Box. And now in control of the varsity team, and his team is up by two. Three-point range from the outside. Battle for the boards. Baker off the glass for two points. It's a good job by Dwayne Baker. We can see right now that Tech Block is going to have to block out at every opportunity. Five all. Pressure being put on by Crocus Plains. Vera now 23 brings a call. Ball across the 10 second line. The ball back outside the price. Owen Price 55. Vera from three point range. That's a long way out. Price picks up the ball in the paint and he's fouled on the play and that foul will go on number 24. Trevor Penner. That will be his first personal foul. The team's first for this half. 
Well, you can see one of the problems with a team like the Tech Rock Hornets who really enjoy shooting the three-point shot. The problems, that is, that are encountered by the teams that are defending them. Uh, what we had is a good job defensively by Crocus Plains, but from that three-point shot player, you get those long rebounds. Ramirez, three points. Good job by Derwin as he looks at the hole. Fourth North to the bounds. Tech Rock left possession again, and they lead by two. Once again, Crocus Plains with that quick transition. This time, however, they throw the ball away, and back come the Hornets. Great steal by number 30, Sean Williams, and that hurts the Hornets. Sean Williams with his first two points, and we're tied at seven. Full court man-to-man -man pressure being applied by Crocus Plains. We'll see this all night. Foot violation on Crocus Plains, so the ball stays in possession of the Hornets. Dwight Kearns, coach of the Plainsmen, now is talking with his assistants. Six minutes, 40 seconds to play here in quarter number one. A fast-paced game. We're tied at seven. Tough pressure being put on. And Joe Vera brings the ball across that midcourt line, and he will now quarterback the offense for the Tech Rock Hornets. Ramirez looks to Price. Price goes on the right-hand baseline, tried to dish it inside, and Penner picked up the loose ball. Good hands by number 24, Trevor Penner for Focus Plains. Williams again looking for the dunk that comes up short, but gets the bucket, and it's now 9-7 for the Plainsmen, our first lead change of the game. Flint Lake is going to have to play extremely hard. John Williams is the one tough individual to play against. Both Here. of these teams like to go, Laurie, so I think we've got fast-paced action all game. Ball's Great taken steal. Away. Penner now brings it across. Sean Williams hits the floor, causes the turnover. Focus Plains has set up that half-court offense, but Williams drives inside. He has six points here in the first quarter. It's 11-7 lead. That's Sean Williams just uh, taking uh, Clint Lake to lunch right there. Chris Ostomo with a short jumper for two points, and he has four in the game. It's a great shot by Ferdy. He let that one fly off the baseline. I don't even think he saw the hoop there. Williams again has an opening on Lake and takes it up. He's fouled on the play, but he's getting inside, Laurie, and that's got to be held by Tech Bach. Well, what we have, of course, if Tech Bach is going to play man-to-man, -man, that means Clint Lake's going to have to watch Sean Williams. Clint's just a little bit too slow in terms of foot speed to keep up with somebody of the speed of Sean Williams. Clint Lake picking up his first personal team second, and as always, this gym is packed for the final of the WIT tournament, and when the host team plays in it, even more so. We've got all the people in attendance here, and we've got an outstanding final for you. So stay tuned all morning on BPW. Focus Plains leads right now by score of 12 to 9 as Sean Williams hits that free throw, and he has seven points in this first quarter. And a three-point lead for the Plainsmen. Once again, as you mentioned, the uh, noise is evidence of itself. Sean Williams misses that second, but it looks like it's a turnover. The turnover, yes, it is. Uh, Ferdy Christostomo keeps the ball with him, takes it out of bounds. That three-point lead for the Plainsmen. They're in possession of the ball. Shot from the outside from Jason Scott. Ball's rebounded there from Boroko. They just take the ball out. now, number 10, when possession dishes it off to Scott. Scott with a short jumper for two points. A good job by Jason Scott. Once again, in terms of Crocus Plains, they really got real tough man-to-man. -man. It's going to be back over. Back over center violation as all three points have crossed, and then they come back on the other side. So a five-point lead for the Plainsmen, and they can stretch that to seven. It's a good job by uh, referee Shapansky once again. Back out to Williams, some three-point range at top, steps inside the paint, travel ball. So there'll be no basket there, and Tech Rock will inbound. Well, that time uh, comes out to the fortune of Tech Rock, but uh, if they're going to stay man-to-man, -man, they're going to have a real tough time with Sean Williams as this game progresses. Vera, 23, Kevin Chief, 25, a grade 10 student. Vera likes to shoot from three-point range, and he hits it. Well, as we mentioned earlier, this game, but uh, from the uh, first telecast this morning, Joe Vieira is the three-point shooter for the uh, Tech Rock Hornets. Do not leave him alone, Jason Scott. Stay Vieira, with him. Vieira has two three-pointers. That ball will go on number 15, Derwin Ramores, and that's his second, the team's third of this half. Well, as you can see in terms of uh, Coach Kearns, Crocus Plains, very unselfish in terms of moving the basketball. What they're doing is they're looking for mismatches underneath Blair, and it doesn't matter who it is. If there's a mismatch, he's going to get the ball. 
At the line, number 13, that's Ian Mariko. He will shoot two. Makes the first one. It's up to a three-point lead for the Plainsman. Good job by Ian on the first one. We'll check clock. Be ready for the pressure after this if it's made. Well, on the second one, misses that one. Still a three-point lead. Piera now gets a ball out to 53. Chris Ostomo, and his shot comes up short. But Jack Bach able to hold on to the ball. Sperdy getting a little bit of trouble there down in the paint. Chief down possession. This is the ball down inside. Number 21 with a short jumper is Gosselin. It's a good look there by Kevin Chief. Here we have Crocus Plains coming off the court. We have a little bit of a miscommunication there, resulting in a turnover. Three minutes, 50 seconds, as Coach Kearns has his team have to throw that ball away. And they only lead by three. Tech Bach to cut that lead down with a bucket here. Chris Ostoma moves inside. He's fouled. He's not going. He'll shoot two from the free throw line. That's a real good job by uh, Ferdy once again. We're going to have a look right here. It's Kevin Chief moving the ball. There's Joe Vieira once again. Jason Scott, what you've got to do is stay out there. You've got to stay out on the three-point line. As you get a good look at Joe there, he's going to hit those. At the line, number 53, Chris Ostoma misses the first one. It's a good job by Ferdy to uh, pull the foul down, end up with the foul here against uh, Sean Williams. Unsuccessful on both, and Williams pulls down the boards. Sean Williams picked up his first personal foul, the team's second. Williams now out high. Bergeron gets the ball to Scott. Scott from the outside comes up short. Tech Bach with a chance to cut that Crocus Plains lead to one. Once again, if we're Crocus Plains, uh, let's work the ball inside. You've got a number of situations where we end up with mismatches when we run our man-to-man -man half court uh, offense. We've got to do that. Kevin Chief comes back, answers for the Hornets, and cuts that to a one-point differential. Kevin Chief with his first bucket, 15-14, Crocus up by one. Royko misses that shot, and again, Hornets pull down the boards, and they have a chance to gain the lead. Chief goes down, pulls up short, two points for Chief. Great job there by Kevin Chief. Takes the ball to baseline, steals it here. And the Hornets now enjoy a three-point lead. Three consecutive buckets for Kevin Chief, and it's 18-15. No shot there. Federal violation. Tech block has things going their way now, Lori, in this noisy and boisterous crowd. Well, what we had is a situation. Jason Scott, for some reason, decided he would change. Jason, we're running uh, full court here. you got to go right to the hole. Sierra steps inside the paint, loses control. Chris Ostoma goes up, and the ball's knocked out of bounds. Tech Bach will inbound from under the basket. Well, right now, Tech Bach is starting to enjoy some momentum here as we've seen this uh, lead change. And with just, over, uh, just under two and a half minutes left here in the uh, first quarter, really emotionally charged. First quarter, the Hornets enjoy a three-point lead. Two minutes, 28 seconds remaining. Tech Bach to inbound the ball, and they're up by three. They trail by as many as five. Yeah, he has nine points in the game. Once again, we've got Joe coming off that high point, high uh, post screen, and he's going to reach in and take a foul here. Joe Vieira picking up his first personal foul, the team's fourth of this half. You get a look there on your screen at the score, 21-15. Six-point lead being enjoyed by the Tech Bach Hornets. Once again, for the Crocus Plains Plainsman, Joe Vieira is for real. He's been doing this for a long time. Cowan goes down for two points. Great side-out play by the uh, Crocus Plains Plainsman. Make the easy two. And now here comes the pressure by Crocus Plains once again. Pressure by both teams. Crocus pressuring the backboard. Got to get it across within 10 seconds. They're able to do so. Tech Bach now they throw it up. Vieira again is wide open. And he has in the first quarter, Louis. Once again, it was great pressure applied by Crocus Plains, but unfortunately, they doing, in doing so, they leave Joe Vieira alone. You can't let Joe Vieira do set shots at the three-point line. Seven-point lead for the Tech Bar Hornets. That's their largest lead in the game so far. Crocus Plains led by five early, and now they have to fight and chip to get back into this first quarter. They trail 24-17.
inside. That move from 24, Penner comes up short, gets his own rebound, goes up strong for two points, and Penner has his first two points of the game. Well, that's a good job by uh, Trevor as he stays with it and gets his own rebound. Once again, Crocus Plains Plains have enjoyed a lot of success. First of all, in the transition. Secondly, if it's not there, you got to put the ball down inside in the paint and make use of those mismatches. Chief from outside, and that ball was up a little too high, out of bounds. 24-19, a five-point lead for the Hornets. A minute 10 now remaining quarter one. That was a good shot by Kevin. He's got to keep taking those shots. They're going to drop. Cowan steps inside. Nice dish off there to number 24. Or pardon me, three, Dwayne Baker. And once again, as I said earlier, I'm just repeating myself, that's where uh, Crocus Plains is going to do their worst damage. There's a steal, and now they've cut it to a one-point lead with just under a minute left here in the first quarter. Murray Matheson with his first two points and five unanswered points on the side of the Plainsmen. The score's back to a one-point advantage for the Hornets. They lead 24-23, another turnout, or pardon me, turnover, so the Plainsmen have a chance to regain the lead before the first quarter runs out, Lurie. It's an excellent job by Crocus Plains in terms of a comeback. They know where they're going to be the most successful. We've got a bit of a mismatch, I should say miscommunication there. we got number uh, three it was, Dwayne Baker for Crocus Plains throws that ball away. 24-23, Tech Park leads by one. 39 seconds remain here in quarter one. You are watching the championship final of the 16th with tournament on BPW Channel 11. Chief misses the ball outside. The ball's being battled around. Shot coming from number 10, Mangaro. The ball picked up there from Rob Gosselin. That's Rob Gosselin. Goes up, gets the offensive board, gives the Tech Bob Hornets a three-point lead with 10 seconds left here in the first quarter. Gosselin picking up his first basket, 26-23. Inside five seconds now remain. A quick shot away. Cowan from three-point range off the back iron does not get it. So after one quarter of play, Tech Park leads 26-23 and another high-scoring affair, Laurie. Well, this is starting out just as you said, uh, just as we saw in terms of uh, the start of the second of our first game. We're going to get uh, going to get a look at uh, first of all some uh, good ball movement here by the Tech Park Hornets. There's Joe Riviera once again, all alone, easy three-pointer. Crocus Plains has got to stay with uh, that particular player. Here's we're going to have the pressure by Crocus Plains. Great steal inside. Put the ball up off the glass for an easy two. Tech Block is going to have to handle the Crocus Plains pressure and inside game. Crocus Plains is going to have to handle the emotionally charged crowd here that really can make the Tech Block Hornets play. And more importantly and more deadly, Joe Vieira from Three Point Country. Well, both teams went on a run there. Tech Fox started off fast. Crocus Plains jumped out to a five-point lead. Tech Fox stormed back to take a seven-point lead. And then we saw Crocus Plains again. Five unanswered points. They cut it down to one. Tech Fox scored just before the quarter came to an end. And you see a three-point lead for the Tech Fox Hornets as they lead the Crocus Plains Plainsman 26-23. And we're set with second quarter action. The other thing that we have to look at here is uh, in terms of referees Shapansky and Kuzbet, they did a great job in the first quarter. Both of these teams want to run, they want to play. If you're coming here to see defensive basketball, this isn't the place. You're going to see a lot of pressure, you're going to see a lot of scoring. We've got two officials here that are very experienced and they're letting the guys play. Great final for you and we've got 30 more minutes, so stay tuned and watch this outstanding high school basketball here on BPW. Ball's knocked away, but Tech Box able to gain possession. And Gora, number 10, and he's fouled on the play. Number 21, Grayson Cowan will pick up his first personal foul, the team's third of this half. It's a good job uh, by the Tech Box corners. We get a look at uh, Lawrence Mangaran there on the screen. Sean Williams calls in the Crocus Plains Plainsman and says, let's just start to play. We've got some good, tough man-to-man -to -man defense being displayed by Crocus Plains right now. Alexander's shot comes up short. Focus will come back down court and chance to cut that three-point lead to two. On the 30, Sean Williams cross-court pass. Williams gets the ball inside. Battles down low off the glass. That ball comes down with it. Uh, Rick Alexander, number 31. A good job by Crocus Plains, as we said before. That's where uh, they're going to have to go, and Tech Block is going to have to handle that inside uh, game of the Plainsman. 
Evan Chief steps inside the paint, just as the ball outside. Then we're on for two points. A great job by Lawrence as he takes it along the baseline and goes strong to the hole. Number 10, Lawrence Mangaron gets that bucket, 28-23, a five-point lead. Baker goes up and comes up short. Price pulls down the board for the Hornets. Well, in terms of uh, Crocus Plains, they've had uh, two opportunities, the shot they want, Baker inside and Williams inside, just unable to convert. Mangaron fires it back out to Chief. Chief steps inside, off balance, throws it up. Alexander there, and he's rejected by Williams. Good block by Sean Williams, but unfortunately, just all he did was push it down the court. Lawrence Mangaran and the rest of the uh, Tecvac Hornets there, and they've got possession of the ball again, and a five-point lead, Blair. Mangaran steps, a free shot to the lane, off the glass for two points. Great job by Lawrence. He beats Grayson Cowan and takes it to the hole. Shoots over the tower, Sean Williams, and it goes down. And we've now got, with uh, eight minutes left here in the first half, a seven-point Tech Block lead. Tech Block has regained that seven-point advantage they held in the first quarter. Sean Williams, number 30 for Crocus Plain, dishes it outside. Cowan with a jumper, comes up short. That particular shot, not one of the best ones that uh, Cowan could put up. That got quite uh, Coach Kearns off the bench. Alexander from three-point range off the front of the iron. Williams will call a timeout, and Coach Kearns will want to talk to his troops. He does not like what's happening out there right now, Laurie. We're going to look at uh, one on the replay here. Here's little Lawrence Mangaran. He takes it to the hole over Sean Williams, and it goes in. Good timeout uh, by uh, Coach Kearns uh, here right now. What's happening is, uh, in terms of Crocus Plains, they're getting the shots that they want, but they're just simply shooting the ball too quickly. What they've got to do is execute a little bit better down at the offensive end. They're doing a half-decent job defensively, but uh, what happens here is he, they can't let uh, Tech Lock get on a roll because this emotional roller coaster here could take uh, easily take uh, Tech Lock to the championship here in the 16th annual WIT. Seven minutes, 35 seconds remain in the first half. Tech Lock 30. Brokers Plains 23 and Techbach, the crowd support, all that's got to be in their favor. They are the sixth ranked team in the province, so they're really the underdogs coming into this game. But uh, the way they've played so far, uh, things are really starting to go in their favor and uh, probably continue throughout the rest of the season here. Well, in uh, terms of the rankings, uh, as we mentioned, uh, in this particular year, we've got 10 or 12 teams that are so evenly matched that as far as I'm concerned, those weekly rankings, they, they really don't mean all that much, Blair. What they do, however, is they do give us an indication as to what's happening throughout the year. But uh, right now, in terms of the uh, talent that we've had and the caliber of play of varsity basketball here in Manitoba this year, there's anywhere from one to a dozen teams that has a legitimate shot at winning our AAA championship. The caliber of play has really picked up in the last couple of months. These teams are coming along, and uh, stay tuned with BPW throughout the season as we will have great high school basketball for you every Sunday morning. And of course, the Provincials live on BPW on March 14th, 15th, and 16th. Another turnover for the Hornets. Well, what's happening is we've got uh, the Crocus Plains who are starting to hang their heads here a little bit. They're getting a little bit uh, caught up in what they're going to have to do, just calm down and play some real tough D. Techbach in possession, setting up their half-court offense. Alexander from the outside. You see that one go up nice and high. Penner comes down the court. The ball's taken away. Sierra, number 23, our three-point shooter, had four of them in the first quarter. In possession of the ball and dishes it off. It's a good job by Crocus Plains. You've got to stay down. Morris comes up short. The ball comes right back to him, and he steps on the baseline. Turnover, and Crocus Plains inbounds the ball. Here we go. Sean Williams on the move. He'll take it to the hole. Williams walked out on the play, so here go the line to shoot two. Thus far in the game, the Hornets have been able to uh, handle that uh, Crocus Plains transition fairly well, Blair, but what they're going to have to do is be aware of it because Crocus Plains, they're looking to run at every opportunity. Robert Gosselin picking up his first, the team's fifth, and Coach Bouchard of the Hornets shouting out instructions. At the line, number 30, Sean Williams, unsuccessful on that free throw. It's been a long, dry spell here for the Crocus Plains Plainsmen. They have not scored yet through three minutes and 20 seconds of this second quarter. Thirty, twenty-three. still that seven-point lead. Alexander dishes it back out. Vieira from way outside off the back iron. 
Crocus Plains, Cowan brings down that one. Good job here by uh, Crocus Plains. Once again, uh, with Joe Vieira throwing it, uh, the ball up from the three-point line and beyond, it's very hard in terms of the blockout assignments. Crocus Plains setting up. Penner steps inside for two points, and that's the first bucket of the second quarter for the Plainsmen. And we've got a foul. That'll go on number 30, Sean Williams, and try to push off. That'll be his second personal foul, the team's fourth for this half. You see number 30, Sean Williams, not happy about that call. Sean Williams with a foul, as you say. We look at Sean go off there, not uh, very happy. He figures that uh, he was the one that was interfered with earlier. However, the basket will count, and it cut that tech block lead to five points. 30-25, inside six minutes now remain in the first half. Ramirez, 15, Vieira is way out time, but they've got to get someone on him as that shot comes down inside. Nice tip inside, a battle once again for the boards is number 21. Gosselin goes up again, and there's a foul underneath the basket. The pushing foul, and I think it'll go on 53, Chris Otoma. That foul is either going to go on uh, Alexander or Chris Otoma as they crash the boards. That's a good job, though. It's a good foul. They're working hard. Uh, they're going up. They know Sean Williams is out of the game. They're making the rest of the Plainsmen play up there above the rim. Chris Ostoma picking up his first personal foul. The team's sixth of this half. There's Ron. Nice pass inside to Baker, and he's fouled on the play. And number 53, uh, Chris Ostoma will pick up his second straight foul. The team's seventh, and that will send number three, Dwayne Baker, to the line to shoot two. Once again, that's the Crocus Plains fast break. You know that uh, Coach Kearns loves the fast break, loves to move the ball up the boundary, loves up, up the sidelines, loves transition. Tech Lock Hornets, they've got to be able to handle that transition game. Dwayne Baker, that was a bonus. He thought it was also a two-point or a two-shot foul. It was a bonus. He missed the front end and turnover and quickly Tech Lock comes back down the court. Desostoma inside, battles for his own boards, and Baker pulls it down for the Plainsmen. Quickly, they come back up court. Honoraj, number 10, gets it outside to Scott. Number four, Jason Scott, looks inside. Baker has it deflected away. Good ball check by Chris Otomo there. Shot from Chris Otomo, and the ball rolls out. Honoraj brings it across the midcourt line. If you look at the players that are on the floor right now, what we need is number four, Jason Scott. Got to get into the low post area. Got the height advantage on Derwin, uh, Derwin Romeros and make him play down in the low post. Get the ball inside. There's Baker. Baker goes up strong. The ball's knocked out of bounds. It'll be a foul. Ian Borico will pick up his first personal foul. The team's fifth for this half. Four minutes, 37 seconds remain in quarter number two, 30-25. We haven't had much scoring here in the last few minutes of this quarter, Laurie. Well, it's not surprising. I mean, we've got to look at the first quarter that we had, Blair. I mean, it was a blazing, blazing speed. Some real good basketball, some very good offensive basketball, some real good basketball in terms of transition. I think what we've got now is the two teams are starting to settle down and uh, starting to play some a uh, little bit more of a game-oriented type of uh, basketball instead of the end-to-end -end here that we had in the first quarter. Chris Lake drives inside. Williams goes up aggressively to pull that one down. Bonneraj dishes it out to Scott. Got a ball moving inside to Williams. Williams steps inside. Ball's knocked away by Lake. It's a good job by Clint Lake as he gets the uh, ball check on Sean Williams. Ramirez goes inside and they have to pull it back out as that shot just took off. Chief from the outside for two points. A good job by uh, Kevin Chief. Once again, here come the Plainsmen. Chief now has eight points in the game, seven point lead. Williams steps inside. He just drives in, doesn't go. Barrico with two points. A lot of contact here, but they're just letting them play, and it's a great game. A lot of contact on that particular situation. We still had Clint Lake coming across. Good no call by referee Cusbett. Keith is open from the outside. For three points, and he has 11 points. It's first 
three-pointer of the game. It's now an eight-point lead for the Hornets. One thing we got to remember if we're Crocus Plains, this is Tech Watch Gym. They shoot here. They practice here. Do not leave shooters open. Recognize who's on the floor. Three minutes now remain in the first half. Shane Smith, 23, just is inside the Williams. He goes up strong. Battles for his own boards, and he comes up a little short once again. Sean Williams a little bit uh, frustrated at this particular time. He had Clint Lake on his hip that time. He should have scored there. That's the type of uh, situation that uh, Coach Kearns wants. First 23, John Vieira with his first two-pointer, but he has 14 points in the game. Well, we've got a situation now where Crocus Plains, they're definitely getting the uh, offensive opportunities they want. They're just unable to convert right now. And Tech Block's coming down. They're doing just the opposite. A 10-point lead for Tech Block. Two minutes, 15 seconds remaining here in the first half. 37-27. Rico pulls down the board. Sean Williams just brings the ball across. Williams loses control as Lake matches up against him. Jason Scott now drives off the glass. Loricos in good position. We've got a jump ball. Nice job by Lake to get a hold of that one. It's a good job by uh, Clint Lake. He goes up extremely tough. Get a look at Clint there. He's really pumped up. So is this crowd. What we're going to do is we're going to get a look at that again. Got Sean Williams put inside to Scott. He's by Vieira. Good shot. Doesn't go down. Clint Lake comes up strong. The Hornets are pumped. The crowd is pumped, and right now they enjoy a 10-point lead, and that uh, 16th annual WIT championship could be within their grasp. A game of emotion here, and the emotion in favor of the Tech Ball Hornets, and their throng of supporters are just cheering them on. Penner dishes it back out to Cowan. Cowan from three-point range. They get inside the Williams again. He goes up aggressively. The ball's knocked away. He's looking for that foul. There's no call down low, and the Hornets come back. What's happened is uh, right now the Hornets got to feel uh, pretty fortunate. What has happened is uh, John Williams four or five times in the paint, and he's just simply lost the handle. What's happened is uh, you, down come the Hornets, and they've been converting, and they enjoy a 12-point lead there. Kevin Chief has just thrown that ball up, and he has 12 points in the game and a 12-point lead for the Hornets. A uh, minute 20 remain in the first half. Jason Scott, number four, pulls that one down, thought to take it. They get it back to Williams, and he's going to drive towards that baseline again. Williams steps inside off the glass, and he's followed by number 40, Clint Lake, and that will be Lake's third personal foul. Williams will go to the line. They've got to watch those fouls on Lake. Well, what's, uh, what we've got to look at is, uh, in terms of the Plainsmen, we're going to get a look at this foul again. Crocus Plains moving the ball. We get Sean Williams all alone here against Clint Lake. Good move by Sean, and he's fouled. That time, Sean managed to get a, keep a hold of the ball. Crocus Plains, they've got the offensive opportunities that they've wanted. Unfortunately for Crocus Plains, Sean Williams has lost, just lost the handle of the ball three or four times. And then what's happened is Cro uh, Tech Block has come back to the other end, and they've hit some great shots. Williams makes one of two from the free throw line, so he's shooting two for five right now. 39-28, an 11-point lead for the Hornets as we move inside. One minute remaining in the first half. Chris Ostomo, shot doesn't go, but right there for the rebound. Number 21, Gosselin, but quickly, Focus Plains comes back down court. Cowan gets the ball inside to Baker. Baker off the glass. Wayne Baker, what he has to do, he's got an intern. Intern, see the hoop and go up strong. You've got yourself an easy two. Kevin Chief pulls up. Does not get the roll, and Cowan comes down court. Cowan across to Penner. Inside 30 seconds. Penner from three-point range, and he hits that one. That cuts the lead down to eight. It's a good job by uh, Penner in terms of hitting the three-pointer. We've got Crocus Plains working real hard here. Inside 15 seconds remaining in the first half, 39-31. And now Tekoff will slow things up a little bit and look for that one shot to go into the lead with either, or pardon me, in the dressing room with either an eight or ten point. It could be 11. Vera would hit that one, but he was fouled on the play. So he'll go to the line to shoot two as Jason Scott picked up that foul. It's a bad foul by Jason Scott. You've got to know that Tech Block is going for a last shot. What we've got is, once again, Jason Scott, don't leave Joe Vieira. Stay with the shooter. 
in our first telecast this morning. That's what we were telling the uh, Vincent Masson Trojans to do. Uh, it was not in the act of shooting. It came after the shot, and they pushed him. So just two seconds remaining. Chief fires one from way out. Comes up short, or pardon me, up short. Misses the basket. But after one half, an exciting first half of this championship final. Host Tech Park Hornets lead to 9:31. Well, you get a look at your screen there at the score. You get a look at uh, Coach Bouchard as he comes across the floor. He's got to be happy with the way his team has played. As far as the uh, Hornets are concerned, what they're going to have to do is try and keep that ball out of the paint. They're going to have to really toughen up defensively. As far as uh, the Crocus Plainsmen are concerned, they just got to keep doing what they're doing. I mean, unfortunately for them, the ball isn't falling. For the Tech Block Hornets, they're coming down and they're really hurting the uh, Crocus Plains, uh, Plainsmen in the transition. I thought it was going to be the other way around. Thus far, it hasn't. They've done a great job, a great half, uh, first half here to this final. Well, let's see what happens in the second half, and we'll be back with it here on VPW in just a minute. Tech Block leads 39-31. Seen uh, quite an exciting halftime show here, and hopefully we got some highlights for you. A slam dunk competition was held, Laurie, and uh, some excitement there. Some uh, real good uh, athletes out there. From uh, the, we're going to have a look at the winner right here uh, from the University of Manitoba on a reverse. That's Winston Duncan. Winston uh, is a third-year player out of uh, Toronto, now with the uh, University of uh, Manitoba Bisons under uh, head coach Rick Suffield. We're going to have a look at our runner-up here from uh, Thunder Bay from uh, St. Ignatius. Going to try and dunk two here for you, folks. Yeah, there was some excitement going on during that time. Both teams have come back out the floor. We're about three minutes from the start of the second half. But uh, that was an exciting show, and... Uh, Two, double dunk. There he goes, and he gets them both, and he's the uh, excellent job. You can see he's happy, and the fans loved it. Guys cheering each other on here. Kind of an interesting competition, uh, but there's been a lot of things interesting with this WIT tournament. Good job. He brings him from way down and gets up. We got Jeff Poole, sec uh, first year player at the University of Winnipeg. Great job, Jeff, who came in third. As I said, first year player at the University of Winnipeg out of Windsor Park High School. Plays for Mr. Bill Wedley, head coach of the uh, men's uh, program there. Here's our winner with a nice scoop. That's Winston Duncan from the University of Manitoba. A one handed swinging around, and uh, yes, he was the winner of the slam dunk competition. Had some excellent dunks in there and support from some of his friends and the players that came back on the floor. The judges were five of the media type out there along with uh, Ken Opalco, coach of the Night Brethren Hawks. Picked the winner and it was a great competition, but we're just a minute and 10 seconds away from the start of the second half of the 16th annual Winnipeg Invitational Tournament Basketball Championship. You can see with one half a play gone by, Tech Park is leading 39-31. Well deserving of that lead, Lloyd. Well, in terms of Tech Block, they've played very well. What they've been able to do is to uh, thus far ride this emotional roller coaster here. They, of course, are uh, the home team. The fans uh, are just jammed in here, and they're really, uh, they'd like to see another uh, Tech Block winner. It's been 1987-88, uh, uh, I believe, was the uh, last time that the uh, Hornets uh, won this tournament. And uh, the people in attendance here would like to see it happen again. In terms of uh, Crocus Plains, what they've got to do is just uh, continually keep knocking on the door. They uh, did a good job in terms of the first half. There were a number of shots that just simply didn't fall for them. Sean Williams got into a bit of a problem uh, there near the end of uh, the half. But in terms of uh, basketball, I'm sure they're going to come out here real strong. As far as the Hornets are concerned, they better be ready because I'm pretty sure that we're going to see the uh, Crocus Plains Plainsmen come out even stronger than they did to begin the game. Well, Laura, you talked about that victory. It took place back in 1987 when Tech Block won this tournament. We run through the 16 years of the Olympic Invitational Tournament. These two teams get ready to come back on the floor. 1976 and 77, the Oakwood Barons out of Toronto won the tournament. In 78, the North High Spartans out of Fargo. And you and I were talking about that a little earlier. Had a kid by the name of Mike Wacker on that team, that uh, outstanding basketball player, and I think played major college basketball in the States. 
The running made Redmond from Toronto won in 79. St. John's was the first local team to win it. They won it in 80. Jarvis Senior Bulldogs in 81. Lester B. Pearson out of Toronto in 82. The Daniel Mac Maroons won it in 83. And I think you remember that team, Larry. Uh, definitely. Uh, for us, it was a very exciting win, especially after 81 and 82, losing to uh, Jarvis and Lester B. Pearson by one in both of those finals. Winning made Maidman, Redmond won it in 84. George Harvey Hawks in 85. Vincent Massey, Vikings of Brandon in 86. Tech Ball Convention in 87. Daniel Mack won their second in 88. Stevenson Packers out of BC won it in 89. Ross Shepard of Edmonton in 90. And we've got a bucket from number 15, Derwin Ramirez. And he now has four points in the game. Starts off with the big three-pointer, and I'll tell you, I said that Crocus Plains was going to start off strong. As they get the ball into Williams, he gets the foul. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the ball to drop, but it's the Tecklock Hornets that come out guns blazing here to start the second half. 42-31, 11-point lead off that three-pointer at the line. Number 30, Sean Williams. There to shoot two. That foul was on number 21, Rob Gosselin. His second personal foul. The team's first to this half. Well, as far as Tech Block is concerned, uh, Crocus Plains got that ball inside far too easily to Sean Williams. What they're going to have to do is put a lot more pressure on the ball, or they're going to have to start fronting Sean Williams. They're going to have to make it harder for him to get the ball. Ramirez steps inside, throws that one up, battle for the boards again. Cowan pulls away with it for the Plainsman. Cowan quickly the ball is deflected into the hands of Penner. Williams looks inside to Baker now. Baker just dishes the ball back out to Penner. Cross-court pass all by himself there. On the outside was Scott. Doesn't go on a foul underneath. So Tech Block picking up the early fouls, Lurie. Well, that's the second one. Once again, we've got Tech Block. They're kind of standing around. What they have to do is they have to block out. Crocus Plains is going to come at you. You're enjoying a 10-point lead right now, but don't think that Crocus Plains is out of the game by any stretch of the imagination. Kevin Chief picking up his first personal foul, the team's second of this half at the line. Number 24, Trevor Penner to shoot two. Unsuccessful on the first one. Crocus Plains hasn't been uh, very lucky from the charity strike here. Six of 13, so they're shooting less than 50%, Lori. 7 of 14, so the shooting are exactly 50% right now, but that's not very good at this level. And they trail by 9, 42-33. Russ, and number third, 21, all by himself. They get it back out. Chief from the outside is long on that one. Williams has it go off his hands, and he just has to throw it away. And Tech Block regains possession. Mihara from way outside again, but he likes to shoot from there and hit four of them in the first quarter. Well, one thing that you've got to know, Joe is very confident, and he'll take that shot. Driving to the hoop, number three, Dwayne Baker. He's fouled on the play. Tech Vok picks up three early team fouls. Tech Vok, once again, you have to be ready for the transition that Crocus Plains will play. Rob Gosling, number 21, picking up his third foul. So he'll head out of the game and go into the line. Number three, Dwayne Baker. The unfortunate thing for Crocus Plains is they don't make the buckets and they put themselves on the line, where, as we mentioned, they're only shooting 50%. They're now 8 of 15, so they're a little above the 50% mark. A back to 50% with a missed shot there, 42-34, an eight-point lead for the Hornets. Sean Williams almost with a big offensive rebound there. Chief now, they fire the ball on the left-hand side. Vieira, number 23, looks inside. Knocked away, and Penner pulls it down for the Plainsman. They come up court very quickly. Plainsman like to run as we play just over a minute and a half here. Short jump shot, and Williams picks up the rebound off the glass. He's fouled on the play. Now fouls are going to start to come into favor here for Crocus Plains. That's four consecutive on the Hornets. Well, what you've seen is uh, Coach Kearns, as he's come out in a zone, you're going to have a look here on your replay. We're looking down inside. There's the shot by Scott. You've got Sean Williams going strong to the boards, gets the offensive rebound, and he's fouled. What we have is uh, we've got Coach Kearns comes out in his zone, and the zone thus far is really uh, frozen the Tech Block Hornets. What has happened is uh, Crocus Plains have really break out of the transition in that zone. Sean Williams, 5 for 11 from the free throw line, so he's shooting on a 50%, but he did make one of two, and that cut the Tech Block lead down to seven. 
Pressure once again by Crocus Plains after the made free throw. Here at 23, it's a ball outside Ramirez. The ball's knocked out of bounds. Techbach will regain possession under the basket. What Techbach is going to have to uh, do is recognize, of course, the zone, and they're going to have to move the ball, look for the weak parts in the zone. Techbach bench, I mean, there's a long one out there with many players and uh, managers. It reminds me of the old days of St. John's. St. John's, Mr. Bill Wedlake, now at the uh, helm of the University of Winnipeg Westman. Here longest, again. Longest bench in Manitoba basketball. There's Joe Vieira, 4 3. Vieira with 17 points in the game. It's back to a 10 point lead for the Hornets. And the fifth consecutive team foul on the Tech Bach Hornets. Once again, the Plainsman transition gets Tech Bach in, in the midst of celebration for Joe's three pointer. Did forgot to get back in transition. You gotta play defense. Tech Bach has picked up five team fouls, and that foul was the third or second, pardon me, on number 23, Joe Vieira. Shot from the outside, Pinner. Williams is there with the offensive board, goes up strong up the glass for two points. That's Sean Williams again. That's about his fourth offensive rebound of the quarter. We're Tech Bach. We've got to block out a lot better than that. 45 37, an eight point lead for the Hornets. Seven minutes, 20 seconds remain here in quarter three. Tech Bach setting up on offense. Slowed the pace down a little bit here in quarter number three as they lead by eight. Joe Vieira steps to the middle of the court. Pass off to Chief. Kevin Chief, 25, inside the paint. Gets it back out to Vieira. Vieira drives inside and gets the wall for two points. What we have in terms of the zone for Crocus Plains going to a little bit of a modified box and one. Got a tip goes. Referee Kuzmik called it out of bounds over to Tech Park, but uh, the other referee picked up the play there with a tip. And the ball is going to be back in the hands of Crocus Plains as they trail by 10. Once again, Jason Scott, number four, has been given the job of watching Joe Vieira. His job is simply that. He's got to stay with Joe all across. And blocking foul down low, and Tech Park has just picked up their sixth consecutive team foul here. So with three minutes and 10 seconds played in quarter number Three, the next foul will put Crocus Plains at the bonus line. Crocus Plains really got to feel good about that because, of course, what they want to do is put the ball inside. They do it again right there to Sean Williams, and he gets the easy two. Sean here comes Roy Roy Sean Williams with six points here in quarter number three. Back to an eight-point lead. Once again, we've got the Crocus Plains pressure. They go back in a modified box and one here. That last foul was on Gossel. There's a three-pointer from the feet away, I think, Lori. That's Joe Vieira from about five-point land. Once again, if we're going to play a 2-3 zone or if we're going to play a box in one, know where the shooter is. There's only one of them on the floor that's going to hurt you from that far out. Joe, Stay with him. Joe Vieira, six three-pointers of the game inside the Baker for two points. Back to a nine-point lead for the Hornets. Evan Chief, 25. This is the ball of Vieira, and he's open again. Vieira, that one arcs. This comes up just a little short. Plainsman pull down the board. The thing that we've got to look at, though, is not to be surprised. Joe Vieira is going to shoot those all night. John Williams, now 30, brings it outside, steps on the baseline, pass inside. Nice dish off to Baker for two. Baker has 11 points in the game. Here we go. Once again, Plainsman, 1 2 2. Come with the pressure. Ball's thrown away, so the pressure works with only a seven-point lead. Crocus Plains now has a chance to cut that tech court block lead to five. But well, right now, Crocus Plains has to feel pretty good. They're getting uh, unbelievable opportunities inside. As you say, the next foul, as we put it inside to uh, Williams, we're going to get a three-second call by referee Cusbit, but that's what Crocus Plains are going to keep doing that. John Williams set up early, got the ball late, and that caused that three-second violation. Five minutes, 22 seconds remaining, a seven-point lead for the Hornets. It's time remaining here in quarter number three. Here we go once again. Jason Scott, you got one job. That stay with Joe Vieira. Vieira tries the hook shot, and the ball's knocked out of bounds. Off of Penner, so the ball, pardon me, off of Williams, so the ball will go over to Tech Bach. Joe Vieira once again open, fires that one from 
Major League distance. It's a great job by Joe. He's just gonna keep shooting them until they put somebody on who's gonna watch him. 25 points for Vieira, seven three-pointers. Crashing the boards again, and Techbach comes away with it. Good job by Sean Williams once again, but simple mathematics. You score two at one end, three at the other all the time. Three-pointers are going to win. Jason Scott gets burnt again. I think what we're going to have to do if we're Coach Corns is we're going to have to put somebody else, somebody who can play. Jason Scott picked up his second personal foul, the team's first to this half. That's exactly what's going to happen. Here comes uh, Drayson Cowan. He's going to have one job, and that job, of course, is going to be to watch Joe Vieira. Four minutes, 43 seconds remain here in quarter number three. Thanks, Lori. Once again, uh, six team fouls against the Tech Vaux Hornets. Crocus Plains, uh, in terms of what they have to do to win this game, I think it's pretty simple. What you have to do is uh, work harder on the one shooter, and that's Joe Vieira. Vieira again, fires one up. Penner pulls down the boards for the Plainsmen. With all the scoring, they're only down by 10, so they're not out of this one. And there's that seventh foul, so going to the line will be number 21, Drayson Cowan. Very simple, as I said, for the Crocus Plains Plainsmen. Joe Vieira's got to be stopped offensively. As far as the offense for Crocus Plains, you got to pump the ball inside. Very aggressive right now. Tech Bach is playing in the first five minutes and 29 seconds. They pick up 17 fouls. The last foul on number 31, Alrek Alexander, and that was his second team foul, or personal foul, pardon me. Into the game for Tech Bach, number 10, Lawrence Mangaron. Did a great job in the first half taking the ball inside. Definitely is not worried about his height disadvantage. Cowan and, and the rest of the planes are going to have to start hitting these free throws if they're going to itch away at that lead, and they would like to when the clock is not running. Well, in terms of school, this is the best time to score points when you're uh, trying to get to from behind, of course, just as you mentioned, when that clock is stopped. But once again, Plainsman just simply can't do the job at the foul line. Nine-point lead for the Hornets. Four minutes, 20 seconds remain here in quarter three. Anger on from three-point range. Again, uncontested three-point shot. Lawrence Mangaron hits that three-pointer, and it's a 12-point lead for the Hornets. Pass inside, and Lake pulls it down. In that particular instance, we got the ball inside Crocus Plains, but uh, we didn't square up, didn't go up strongly. Shot from Lake from the outside. Battle once again. Penner picked up the ball, pardon me. That was number 15. Bart Walker just came in the game, picked up the ball, stepped on the baseline. We've got the Crocus Plains Plains when they're starting to stand around now. They're starting to get caught up in all of this. Chief moves inside with a roll. Comes up short and Penner pulls away with the boards. All by himself down the court, 24. Trevor Penner comes up short. As far as Crocus Plains, looks like they're playing a little bit timid here at the offensive end. They're not going up strong. Angeron from the outside gets his own rebound. Kevin Chief now 25. Drives towards the paint, pulls it back out. Kevin Chief, quick move inside. Just dishes the ball back outside. Kevin Chief from three-point range. And we've got pushing foul underneath the basket, I believe. On number 30, Sean Williams. Will be his third personal foul. Silly foul by number 30, Sean Williams. He's getting a little frustrated. Things aren't going well. The uh, Crocus Plains Plainsmen, as we said, their object uh, is very simple here in this particular game, and it's just not happening for them. Right now, Tech Fox is in control of this game. If the Plainsmen don't start to do something right now, it's over. Three minutes and eight seconds remaining. Sean Williams goes to sit down. He's not very happy about that. Just picked up his third personal foul. I think Coach Coons has got him out because of emotion. Inside three minutes, move inside by Alexander, and the ball's taken away by number 23, Shane Smith. Good job by Shane Smith that time at the defensive end. Tech Buck doing a good job down here. Pressure by Tech Buck, and Scott has to take the ball back out again. This is the ball to Smith from three-point range. Battle for the boards, and Lake pulls it down for the Hornets. Does the smart thing of just holding up. Did a good job by Clint. 
Right now for Crocus Plains, they're starting to fall apart. Nothing's going right for them. Nice move inside by Lake, and he'll be called for the charge, though. Oh, pardon me, that was Alexander that went inside, number 31, and picked up the charging foul. Excellent job by Alexander. He take, you get a look at him there on your screen. He takes the ball to the whole heart. That's a player control foul, so they will not shoot the bonus on that one. It's a break there for the Hornets. Well, right now, as far as uh, Tech Clock is concerned, they enjoy that 12-point uh, lead. Things are going very well for them. Crocus Plains, they just can't convert at this end. They're really starting to play timid. Jason Scott from three-point range is not going to take that one. Steps inside. Nice dish off pass to Baker. Baker goes up strong. Shot's taken away, and Keith, Keith pulls down the boards. Once again, not even close by Crocus Plains. The other thing that Tech Fox got to like is uh, they're getting Joe Vieira a nice rest, I'll tell you. And he's going to come out, and he's going to be shooting. Alexander goes inside, and he's fouled. He will the line to shoot two. Well, right now, Blair, in terms of emotion, the uh, Tech Fox Hornets are pumped. They're extremely pumped. They can smell victory here. Crocus Plains, start, they, 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 they've just stopped playing. Now Rick Alexander picking up, or pardon me, going the line to shoot two. That last foul went on number three, Dwayne Baker. That was his first personal foul, the team's third of this half. 56-44, a 12-point lead for the Hornets. Well, as you mentioned, in terms of that uh, score, Blair, as, as poorly as Focus Plains is playing at this particular point, they're still only down 12. The game is uh, far from over. You get a look there uh, on your screen at the score, and uh, we're going to give uh, Tech Bach another one. Get a look at uh, Sean Williams there on the bench, and uh, what we're going to have to do if we're Crocus Plains is we're going to have to try to cut it to about uh, eight or ten point lead and see what can happen in the fourth quarter. Baker looking down low, but no one's there. Cowan now steps towards the baseline, dishes it back to Baker off the glass for two points. Good example of a little two-man game there. Good job by Crocus Plains. The three to Wayne Baker with that bucket. Evan Chief, 25, wheels the ball around his back and brings it across that 10-second line. Gets it back from three-point range, does not take this one. Mangaron steps in, he's blocked, and the foul will go on number 21, Grayson Cowan. That'll be his second personal foul, the team's fourth for this half. It's a good job by uh, Lawrence Mangaron, but uh, if you're playing for the Crocus Plains Plainsman, you might want to pick up the thing that Lawrence has only got one move. He just got that one little pump fake, but I'll tell you, he does it exceptionally well. Fifty-seven, forty-six, an eleven-point lead with one minute and eleven seconds remaining here in quarter three. Devin Chief from three-point territory, and he hits that one. He has sixteen points in the game. Once again, we had Baker and uh, Crowen at the top. What did they do? They had no communication. Left the shooter wide open. Brad Dodds, number five, just subbed in the game. Scott moves inside, and he's rejected by Alex Ermandrin. Pardon me, Lake inside. Traveling violation. The ball will go over to the Plainsmen as they trail by 14. Good hustle by the Hornets. Get the ball to Baker. Baker inside, and the ball's knocked away from him. Baker gets it right back and in for two points. Here comes the pressure from Crocus Plains. Good job by Kevin Chief. Holds the ball. To bring the ball across the 10 second line. 25 seconds remaining here in quarter number three. A 12 point lead for the Hornets. Take that last shot. Now we get a 14 point lead to have just 10 minutes remaining in the game. Inside 15 seconds now. Chief steps inside, Mangren's by himself, not take the shot, just dishes it back out, now they move inside 10, well, here they go. Chief steps inside, rims, they battle for the boards, time runs out in the third quarter, no shot. So with just 10 minutes to play, Tech Clock leads by 12. Great job by the Tech Clock Hornets in the third quarter. They extend that to a 12 point lead. Ten minutes remaining, and we'll take a look at some of the action in the third quarter. Lori, uh, Tech Buck again, having things going their way. Well, in terms of uh, having things going their way, they definitely are. Crocus Plains, offensively, we're going to have a look here. They're going to work extremely hard. The thing that is really unfortunate for them, it's taken them so long to get things going. Nice two-man game there. It works out really well. 
It's a good job. That's what Crocus Plains has to do more of. Going to have a look here in uh, terms of Vieira. The ball's going to be moved around here, and here's Joe. He's left alone. He's going to shoot that basketball. I mean, for if it was for me, I'd give him five points for that one. He's so far out. But uh, it's very simple. It's very basic. He's on the floor. You've got to watch him. Uh, in terms of Kevin Chiefs, same thing. Crocus Plains, you've got to understand, this is Tech Fox Home Gymnasium. They shoot here. They practice here every day. So you're going to have to come out. You're going to have to play. The game plan is still the same. The only problem is you now have only one quarter left in which to accomplish it. 60 to 48. As Tech Bach leads by 12 with just 10 minutes of basketball remaining. And this capacity crowd here at the Tech Bach Gymnasium is enjoying the action. Right there on your screen, the gentleman in the brown shirt we're just missing. He's just going out of a focus. That's Mr. Brownie Bradshaw. That's one of the brains uh, behind this tournament. Brownie was here at the very beginning of this tournament, helped put a lot of things together and have done a, has done a super job. It's one of the gentlemen that you, we have to take our hats off to. He started the wit way back 16 years ago. 16 years of outstanding basketball here at the Olympic Invitational Tournament. And it continues with just 10 minutes to go. Well, right now, as we said before, just as we started the uh, second half, the, uh, what has to be done by both teams is exactly the same. Here at Crocus Plains, they start doing what they want to do, ball inside, Sean Williams. That's where they want it. Sean's got to make that, though. What Sean's got to do is get himself then mentally back into the game. Don't worry about the officiating. Sean, the officiating's been fine. What you've got to do is put that all behind you. You now have 9 minutes and 45 seconds to win this basketball game. What you've got to do is you just got to go out and play. 12-point oh, deficit is not insurmountable, so there's lots of time left. Williams hits the first one of two, which he will receive here. That last foul going to number 55, Owen Price. That's his first personal foul. That's a good start by Sean. He's got a chance here to cut the lead to 10. I will do so, but the ball comes back in the hands of Baker, and he loses under the basket. What Baker's got to do is he's got to go up strong there. Vieira now 23, back into the game for Tech Bach. Picks the ball up high. He can shoot from out there. Mangrin. For Tech Block, what we want to do is maybe take the air out of the ball a little bit. Take your time. You've got the lead. That's inside the lake, and Lake just dishes it back out. Tech Block doing a very good job of being patient here. And this time they fire the ball away. Clint Lake, number 40, pulls it up, holds on, and gives it back to Vieira. Good job by uh, Tech Block here, taking a little time off the clock. Thing that we've got to do though is continually look at the basket. Good pressure defense, but they get the ball inside, and Lake goes up, grabs the boards, and throws it up, and he'll pick up the foul, and that'll be his fourth personal foul on number 40, Clint Lake. That was a good job by Tech Lock in terms of uh, moving the ball. Unfortunately, not enough ball movement. What they got to do is just uh, take a little bit. Uh, Time off the clock, move the ball a little bit better, you're going to be okay. More importantly though, Grayson Cowan's going to come down to the other end with the clock not running and shoot the bonus. Right now, Tech Vox still enjoys 11-point lead, just under nine minutes left in this contest. So we're looking at the uh, championship uh, final here on VPW, the championship final of the uh, WIT tournament. Cowan getting the front end of that bonus, cuts the lead down to a 10-point Hornet lead. An inch away here if they can get another one. Comes up short. They battle for the boards and Tech Bach pulls it down. Once again, Crocus Plains coming up cold at that foul line. Eight minutes, 40 seconds remain here in quarter four. 60 to 50, a 10-point lead for the Hornets. Angra, number 10, gets it back to Vieira. Got a man open down on the right-hand side, but he fires it back left. Mangrin from the three-point range has knocked away, and as a traveling violation, as Price loses balance. Well, once again, as you can see, Jason Scott, he has one job, and that job is to uh, simply hound Joe Vieira. You get a look out at the, our score there on your screen. That time, Jason did a good job. The other thing that we've got to do, though, if we're the rest of the players on the floor for Crocus, we've got to block out an extremely difficult job, especially when you've got that ball coming from the three-point line. Bouchard still shouting out instructions to get inside the Penner. Penner does not get the roll, and Price pulls down the board for the Hornets. Once again, just what Crocus Plains wants. Unfortunately, Trevor Kenner doesn't follow through, a little bit timid. Sotoma comes up short, and very quickly, Crocus starts to run once more. 
Cowan off the pinner, and he has the ball stripped right out of his hands. Trevor Panner a little upset. Trevor, don't be. That was a great ball check by Lawrence Mangaron. Mangaron got up quite high, and as Penner put the ball up, just slapped it right out of his hands. What we've got to do if we're Crocus Plains, you've got to go hard to the hoop, guys. Got to go hard to the hoop. Put the ball outside to Scott. Scott fires it long, and Alexander pulls that one down. Seven minutes, 50 seconds remain here in the fourth quarter. It's a 10-point lead for the Hornets. Well, right now, I'll tell you, with uh, Crocus Plains, their inability to score. Great job by Ferdy as he changes in midair. Sean Williams had him blocked. Yes, Otoma takes it back down after that pump and puts it in for two, back to a 12-point lead. Williams being pushed and shoved around down low, steps inside, uses the glass, battles for his own boards, and has it taken away. It's Rob Gosselin with a great board for Tech Buck, but here we have Crocus Plains, the same as the third quarter. They come down, they get the ball inside, and they're two, three feet away. They don't hit. Tech Buck comes back, and they score. Gosselin on the offensive end gets the board for two points. It's now a 14-point lead for the Hornets. And the ball's taken away again, but pushed right back in the hands of Cowan. I think Crocus wants a timeout, and now they get it. With seven minutes remaining here, and a 64-50 lead. Well, Crocus Plains, they've just simply been bitten here by the bug. They cannot score. They've gone ice cold from the foul line. In terms of their offensive uh, half-court game, they get the ball inside two or three uh, feet from the hoop. They simply can't convert. Meanwhile, what do we have? We have the Tech Rock Hornets come down at the other end, and they're firing from anywhere, from 2 to 42 feet, and it goes in for them. Well, we take a look here at the Tech Rock Gymnasium and the many people in attendance. Seven minutes of basketball remaining in this final, and there you see the score. Tech Box 64, Crocus Plains 50, 1991 Winnipeg Invitational Basketball Tournament, the 16th annual, the final game covered for you here on VPW Channel 11 Sports. Well, we had a situation, as you mentioned, in the third quarter there, Blair. Tech Box came out and picked up a number of fouls. Crocus Plains couldn't ask for a better situation. They're easily getting the ball inside. They uh, had the bonus uh, situation uh, absolutely just handed to them and they just have been unable to score. Crocus has been in the bonus situation since about the five minute mark of the third quarter. Eight minutes of basketball and uh, I think they scored three points off of that and uh, they had a chance to score eight. Just haven't done what they need to do. Well, they're gonna have to uh, definitely start uh, converting down at this end because uh, as we mentioned, just seven minutes left in the game and the crowd's really getting pumped up and Tech Rock Hornets, they can taste blood. This is Scott Floyd. They get the ball inside to Williams. He's pushed from behind. This is Toma will pick up his third personal foul. I mean, that could be his fourth. That's Ferdy's fourth. They're just going to keep pumping the ball inside to Williams. At the line once again, number 30, Sean Williams. Successful on that free throw. We'll have another one here. The lead's back down to 13 points. And successful on the second one, but Cowan's there with the boards. Goes up strong, and he's fouled on the play, and I think Chris Ostoma will pick up his fifth and have to leave the game. They've got, that's only Ferdy's third foul they're saying here. Now they've got him for the third. A minute ago, they had four on the board. Now they bring it back down to two. They give him the third one. So we'll put him down for three here. Once again, Crocus Plains' inability to score. Not able to get the front end of that bonus. And that not allow them to take that second shot. They trail by 13. Six minutes, 35. Alexander dishes the ball of the air now 23. Likes to shoot from anywhere on this court. This is it inside. It's taken away by Scott. Here comes Crocus Plains. Inside the Williams. Drives inside. Short jumper for two points. Crocus Plains going to come with a lot of full court man-to-man -man pressure for this last few minutes. An 11 point lead and that foul will go on Williams and that will be his fourth personal foul. Coach Kern's not happy with that. That's silly. Got a lot of other people out there that can take fouls, a lot of other people out there that can steal the basketball. Now he's in real uh, 
predicament here as to whether or not he's going to let John Williams continue with over six minutes left here in the final. The board calls for three. I've got him down for four. We'll check and see what happens on the next one. It goes back to two or to five. Now they've got him up for four there now. So that was his fourth personal foul. So he is in foul trouble with six minutes left in the game. Piera back to Chief. Gets it to Alexander as they bring it around the outside perimeter. Piera has it knocked away. Loses control. It's a back over center violation. Going to have Dwayne Baker come back in the game. He's going to take Williams out. Tech Rock going man to man. 64-53, an 11-point lead. Chance for Crocus to cut it down to single digits if they can get a bucket here. Baker now looking inside, gets the ball to Penner. Penner's shot won't go. And I think he'll pick up the foul down low. Trevor Penner has had about uh, four or five opportunities here in the second half for easy buckets. Just hasn't been able to score. Didn't get called for the foul. It was a traveling violation. Scott now moves inside, takes a short jump for two, and it's a nine-point lead for the Hornets. Right now, here comes Crocus Plains. Tremendous amount of pressure. At 10 seconds to bring this ball across the midcourt line. They do so in time. Five minutes, 20 seconds remain here in the fourth quarter. 64-55, a nine-point lead for the Hornets. Goslin, shot doesn't go, and Cowan pulls down the board. Chance to cut it to seven. Focus can cut that tech block lead down to seven points. It's a re roll very close to five minutes. Looks inside Baker trying to use the glass, comes up short, gets his own rebound. He's fouled in the play, so Baker will go to the line to shoot two. Here we've got another example. We've got Baker on the great ball cut. He comes across wide open, and he just simply clunks the ball off the bottom of the iron. We're going to get a look at this on the replay here, Blair. In a nice cut, here he comes in, and he just clunks it off the iron, and then he gets fouled. Focus has had their chances down low. They're just not being very aggressive and going to the hoop. Well, as we say, it seems that offensively for this entire second half, Crocus has played rather timidly at the offensive end instead of going to the uh, glasses as strong as possible. And it looks like we might have uh, foul. Well, it looks like we've got five on somebody here. Looks like Rob Gosselin will pick up his fifth personal foul. So that's the delay in the action right now. Gosselin goes out of the game, scored two points in the first quarter. They've got some very important rebounds on both the offensive and defensive end to keep the ball alive for the Hornets. Well, Rob's done a very good job here in this final for the Hornets. Now what we've got to look at, uh, if we're Crocus Plains, we've got to hit these two, and uh, we've got a, we got ourselves a ball game. We still have five minutes left here, Blair. And uh, as I said earlier, it's amazing that uh, Crocus Plains has played so poorly offensively, and they're still in the ball game. 64-55, Greg Bouchard looks on as his team leads by nine points, but going to the line for the Crocus Plains Plainsman, number three, Dwayne Baker, and he will shoot two. Successful on the first one, it cuts the lead down to eight. The Hornets have to be ready for the tough man-to-man -to -man pressure that's going to be applied by the Plainsman. And successful, Coop Lake picks up the ball. So with four minutes, 55 seconds remaining, 64, 56, an eight-point lead for the Hornets. Once again, Crocus only 50% from that line, and right now that foul line's a difference in the game. Govier from three-point range. That's eight of them in the game. That's Jason Scott. His job is to be on Joviera. The ball goes down into the low post. For some reason, Jason goes down and tries to double. Leaves Joe Vieira wide open. 28 points now for Vieira. An 11-point lead. Shot from the outside coming up short from Scott. And again, it's just not good, strong shooting. Once again, Jason, you got one job, and that's the guy in front of you, number 23. You stay with him. He'll pick up that foul. Number four, Jason Scott will pick up his third personal foul, and that should send Vieira down to the bonus line. So both teams in the bonus situation no longer is that an advantage. Oh, that's the 16th foul, pardon me. So the next one will send them down there. So there's no longer does Crocus have the advantage in the foul situation. Well, we've got uh, Coach Kearns takes Jason out of there. We're going to see who's got the job of staying with Joe. Looks like it's going to be Tour Vonaraj this time. Number 10, Vonaraj subbed into the game, and he'll stay with number 23, Joe Vieira, if he can. Kevin Chief took a little extra step there. Two points. It's a great job by Kevin. All of a sudden, Tech Vok enjoys a 13-point lead. 
69-56, under four minutes remaining here in the game. Ball's knocked away by Lake, but it comes back to Baker. Cowan now steps inside that three-point area and gets it back outside. Cowan from three-point range, and he hits it. It's a big basket by Jason Cowan right there. Off to a 10-point lead, 69-59. Three and a half minutes remaining in quarter four. Got Vonaraj made a little bit of a mental error once again. You got to stay with Joe Vieira all the way. We've got Coach Kearns up on the bench. Chief from the outside for two points. Kevin Chief starting to get on fire now. He has 19 points in the game. 71-59, we have a timeout, a 12-point lead for the Hornets. Three minutes and five seconds to go in this fourth quarter. Well, what we have for Crocus Plains, number one, an ability to uh, convert at the offensive end. Number two, they've gone stone cold from the foul line. Number three, you've got to recognize, this is what uh, Coach Kearns is saying, you've got to recognize who the shooters are out there. They've got two on the floor. They've got Kevin Chief and they've got Joe Vieira. We stay with those two people. Do not try and help, do not try and double. Know your assignment and stay with it. They haven't been able to do that. There's only three minutes left in this game. And what we're going to look at is uh, in terms of Kevin right here, we've got Vonaraj. He's there. He's with Vieira. Cowan, once again, you let Kevin Chief get the ball. Your job is to not let him get the basketball. Great job by Kevin. There's only 12, uh, as I say, a 12-point lead, three minutes left in the game. Tech Fox is going to win this game. Still three minutes and five seconds remaining. We've got uh, Coach Kearns has made the decision. He's put Sean Williams back in with just over three minutes. The trouble is right now, <laughs> in terms of emotion, Tech Vok is right now on a, on a high on that roller coaster. They've got this uh, packed gym behind them. And I'm telling you right now, they're going to win the 16th annual wet. Penner now outside gets it to Scott. Focus Plains, Williams from three-point range. Doesn't hit it, and Kevin Chief, 25, pulls down the defensive board. No need for Crocus Plains to go for the three so early. Two minutes, 40 seconds remaining here in quarter four. A 12-point lead for the Hornets. Good job by the Hornets here. They're going to try and take the air out of the ball. Good steal by Scott, however. Scott taking that ball right out of the hands of Alexander. Once again, they come down and trying to get that lead back in single digits. Williams takes it down to 10 with a bucket there. That's what you've got to do if you're Crocus Plains. Let's get the ball down to Williams. And first, let's get it down there in a hurry. Two minutes and 13 seconds remain. 71-61. Lake gets it inbound play. Brings it across the midcourt line and puts on the brakes. Sean Williams, once again, mental error, too late. We're full court man-to-man, -man. that means five on five. He let Clint Lake come from all the way in the forecourt into the backcourt to get the ball, relieve the pressure. Inside, two minutes now remaining in quarter number four. Kevin Chief, 25, dishes it back out. Vieira way outside the three-point line, but uh, he's been known to shoot from that range. Maybe got caught with a treble, but uh, lost control, and picked it back up, send it out to Chief, and he hits the three points. He has 22 points in the game. Well, Tech Buck definitely got a break there. Joe Vieira got away with a traveling call. What happened is uh, we end up having a lot of people converge on Vieira, leaves uh, Kevin Chief wide open, he hits the three. It's all over, but the crying now. 13-point lead, Williams pushes off, doesn't get called, picks up two points. A lot of pressure being put on, 74-63, a minute 15 remaining. Ball's knocked out of bounds, so Tech Rock inbounds from the side now. Once again, Joe Vieira's left. Jason Scott, you got to be there. Too on the, late. On the play, Dwayne Baker will pick up his second personal foul. Joe Vieira will come down to the line to shoot the bonus. Get a look at Joe there on your screen. He's had an exceptional basketball game. They leave him alone at the three-point area. You get a look at uh, Coach Bouchard there. A little worse for wear. He's worked really hard here, and he's going to earn himself a WIT championship. At the line for Tech Bach, number 23, Joe Vieira. Misses the front end of that bonus. They run away from our camera angle here. The ball comes back to Focus Plains. A minute 10 remaining. It's an 11-point lead. 
Scott, and he's fouled in the play, so he'll go to the line to shoot two. Once again, uh, Crocus Plains still with the transition. They're still pushing the ball up. Unfortunately for Crocus Plains, it's uh, just a little bit too late. Pardon me, that's number three. Dwayne Baker is fouled in the play. He will go to the line to shoot two. Once again, in terms of the game, it's just been amazing at Crocus's inability to score here in the second half when they, uh, as you mentioned, all uh, the opportunities that they needed, everything in their favor in terms of uh, height disadvantages and uh, in terms of the bonus here, Clint Lake's going to try and go coast to coast. He had the ball knocked away from him, so it's one minute remaining. Crocus trailing by 10, quickly comes up court. Baker steps left now, drives towards the bucket. He's fouled on the play, and once again, he'll go the line to shoot two. 55 seconds left in the game, 10-point lead. We're going to see Crocus at the foul line again. They just, as we've mentioned, ice cold from the foul line. Maybe they're going to end this game shooting 50%. It might uh, well be below that. They'll continue to pressure here. Timeout being taken by Coach Bouchard right now. Or no, pardon me, that's another... Uh, Fifth foul. This time, he's definitely got five. Got five on him, so he'll go out of the game. Number 53, Ferdy Chrisatoma, and he had four points in the game. Picks up his fifth foul. He leaves with 55 seconds remaining, and his team out in front by 10. Definitely, here we are, the 16th annual WIT. A definite success. We've got to take our hats off to uh, the people that have done such a great job here at Tech Rock. Get a look there at uh, referee Kuzbet. Coach Bouchard still talking to his troops and talking. We've got to get that ball. They're going to pressure us and they'll be all over us. Let's not make a mistake with it. Well, here we are once again. Foul line. Worst place in the world for Crocus Plains to be. I'm, not, I'm sure they're going to go back home next week and work on that for a little while. They're up the lake. Lake's going to go in. Tried to slam it, but lost control. Just knocked away. Gets it back, and the ball's being battled for. Black now gets it out to Vieira, and Crocus putting on all kinds of pressure, and he's fouled on the play with just 38 seconds remaining. Well, as I was about to say, here we are. Number 16 is going to be in the books in 38 seconds. You get a look at uh, Coach Bouchard there on your screen. He's done an excellent little job. Deserves this victory. He's going to get himself a victory. I was uh, fortunate enough to share a WIT victory with Coach Bouchard as an assistant over at Daniel Mack. Coach Scott and Coach Martin, I should say Coach Martin and Coach Bouchard have done a fabulous job here. An excellent tournament. Uh, we look at uh, Crocus Plains. Done a super job. We've seen them on uh, our uh, telecast before. Unfortunately for them, they came out in the second half, went stone cold, both at uh, the offensive end and at the uh, foul line. The other thing that we've got to look at is uh, Mr. Joe DeCurzio here at Tech Rock, tournament director, has put on an excellent tournament. Certainly has, and once again, the Winnipeg Invitational Tournament, outstanding high school basketball classic, and brought to you by VPW Channel 11. Stay tuned with VPW throughout the year as we're getting ready for the awards presentation. And there's Mr. DeCurzio on your screen right now. And uh, played a prominent role, coached the uh, last championship team out of Tech Rock, and uh, now on the management end of it. Yeah, Joseph's doing an excellent job here over at Tech Rock. As you mentioned, we see uh, the, the past, and now we see the present. But actually, we've got a little smile out of there. Coach Martin, they've done an excellent job. This is uh, going to do well for them, as uh, not only are they going to take the WIT trophy here at the 16th annual, but they're going to, of course, move up in the rankings. Looks like Tech Rock is going to be in that number two spot come next Tuesday when the rankings come out. Oviera, 75-64. Hits from the line, second opportunity here. You gotta look at the MVP of the tournament. 30 points here in today's game, 76-64, a 12 point lead. The shot from three point range knocked out of bounds off of Vieira, so the ball will be in possession of the focus planes underneath the basket, just 32 seconds remaining. Get a look at their, uh, once again, referee Cusbud, referee Chapansky have done an excellent job here in the final. We're no. talking a final game, and what you want is two officials that are going to let the teams play. That's exactly what they've done. Alan Chief now gets the ball inside. We move inside 20 seconds, and he's fouled. 76-66, still a 10-point lead, and uh, she mentioned about three minutes ago, Lloyd, it's all over, and uh, I tend to concur. 
Well, what you see is, uh, first of all, you get a situation where you get two officials that let the kids play. Crocus Plains have done an excellent job here in the tournament. We've seen them uh, come in here as finalists, and uh, the last telecast we saw them, they were, of course, winning the uh, John Taylor uh, Classic, so they've seen uh, both uh, sides of the coin. 77-66. Makes that 78. All academic from here now as we move inside. 15 seconds. Crossbird pass to Williams. Williams steps inside, partially deflected by Lake. And he'll be called for the foul, and that'll be his fifth personal foul, I believe. Clint did a very good job. He got off to a bit of a slow start for Tech Lock. Came back in, and he uh, did an exceptional job for Coach Bouchard. Going to the line, number 30, Sean Williams. Crowd favorite coming into the game. That's 33, Clayton Barron. Clayton Barron, as you say, crowd favorite. Now we got Sean Williams at the foul line. It's going to be very interesting if we can have a Crocus Plains player that can make two in a row. Unsuccessful. He may have did that one on purpose so they get the ball back. Scott goes up with a shot. Barron comes down with the board and this is out to Vieira. Just dishes the ball off. Three seconds remaining and now it's all but over here. 78-67. A well-deserved victory for the Tech Park Corner. It says Chief will go down to shoot the bonus. Number 25, Kevin Chief. Excellent job here by the Hornets. Uh, last time the Hornets were down the line, we saw Joe Vieira, a three-point shooter, been the team captain and has uh, worked them for the last three years. Now what we're going to see, number 25, Kevin Chief. This is the new era parent here at Tech Buck. One heck of a ball player, this young man. That's a nice three points from outside. Nice shooting touch on that ball. Number 15, Derwin Ramirez. Very happy about this as time runs out here. Coach Plain throws it down, and the Tech Buck Hornets have won the 1991 Winnipeg Invitational Tournament for the 79-67 victory over the Crocus Plains. Plainsmen and very happy supporters and a happy Tech Buck team out on the floor, Laurie. Well, this is one of the things that uh, you just can't miss. Every uh, morning that we're allowed into your living rooms, Blair and I tell you, you've got to get out here. There's nothing like it. Here we are at the 16th Annual WIT. For those of you that are sitting at home this morning, get out and support your local basketball. Get into a gymnasium, because uh, right now, the emotion that's going through the players and the fans, it's something that can't be replicated. You've got to come down, and you've got to experience it firsthand. Very happy group of young men from Tech Bach. Crocus Plains played well, stayed close throughout most of the game. Just not able to come back and make a game of the dying moments here. Techbach wins the championship 79-67. And stay tuned with us here as we will have the award ceremonies and the uh, very uh, interesting award ceremonies. They bring out all the teams that played and the All-Stars and hand out the championship uh, banners and those things. Well, this is one of the things that uh, is a wit tradition in terms of uh, bringing all the teams that are in the tournament back down to the floor. Right there, you get a very good look at uh, the uh, WIT logo and trophy table. What will happen now, of course, is uh, we'll probably have a, a number of uh, officials from the Winnipeg School Division that will be here. One person that we know that's uh, here for sure is Mr. Walt McKee, the head of phys ed for the Winnipeg School Division, and uh, he will probably be the one who will be involved in the uh, award ceremony. In the background, you see the teams that were involved here in the 1991 Winnipeg Invitational Tournament. We'll see if we can pick up our announcer down at floor level to pick up what will be happening here with the award ceremony. I think what we've called is the consolation winner, St. Ignatius Falcons out of Thunder Bay. Uh, 
The captains from Elmwood. Elmwood, please. Please, 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 President of Basketball of Manitoba, Mr. Tom Kendall. Head women's coach at the University of Winnipeg. And the second place team, the Brandon Crocus Plains Plainsman. And here's the big one. Head coach of the University of Manitoba presented to the victorious Techbach Hornets. Very happy group from Techbach. You can just let the crowd speak for itself, Blair. Presentation uh, to all of the uh, players on the Tech Fox squad. Presentation being made by Mr. Tom Kendall, the president of Basketball Manitoba. Each player will receive a medallion and a t-shirt. Recognition here of the 1991 Invitational Tournament. Hope they have quite a few medals and quite a few t-shirts from the Tech Fox bench we saw earlier in the game. 15 or 16 deep, I believe. Well, once again, in terms of players, statisticians, as we were uh, kidding earlier in the con in the uh, telecast, I believe it was uh, Mr. Bill Wedlake was one of the uh, first, if not the first coach here in Winnipeg to introduce uh, audiovisual members of his team and uh, a bunch of uh, other things that uh, People doing things that uh, we, uh, the rest of us that were coaching at that time, really didn't know what they were doing. But as you mentioned, uh, and as we both mentioned, when it came to Coach Wedlick, you were looking at a bench that was holding anywhere from uh, 19 to 23 players. Just passing out the awards here. We've got uh, Clint Lake and uh, Kevin Chief right there. Coaches and well deserved with both coaches here from Tech Ball. Get a look there, uh, very uh, dynamic tandem right there in terms of uh, Mr. Scott Martin, Mr. Greg Bouchard. All stars. All stars. Greg Law from St. Ignatius. From Vincent Matthew, Peter Young. Peter Young from Vincent Massey Trojans. Peter was on our uh, telecast oh, earlier this morning. Alan Doucette. From the Elmwood Eskimos. Or pardon me, Elmwood Giants now. Elmwood Giants now. Alan's done a real great job in terms of coming back. That's Jason Cowan from uh, Crocus Plains. Number 21. From the Tech Box Hornets, Ferdy Christostoma. Worked real hard inside, Ferdy. Next one is going to be the MVP Next of the tournament. The MVP will receive a trophy plus a pair of Reebok pumps. From the Tech Box Hornets, Twenty-three, just an outstanding game. Excellent game for Joe. As we mentioned earlier, he's the one that uh, makes the uh, Tech Block Hornets click. And that wraps things up here. Joe Vieira, the MVP, with Coach Wedlake from the Westman. Another outstanding basketball tournament for the Wit. Uh, great finish. Well, definitely a great finish. As we said, it was really great to see the the, the uh, stands uh, packed here. The Tech Block with the home team, and uh, they didn't let their supporters down. A lot of excitement and uh, just a great, absolutely uh, great uh, tournament. In terms of uh, 
some uh, of our next telecast. We'll be looking February 17th at uh, Dakota and uh, Glenlawn in terms of girls. And as you mentioned uh, earlier, Blair, we're going to look at uh, some university action from the University of Manitoba. I should say the Manitoba Bison taking on the Westman. So stay tuned here on VPW in the coming weeks for more outstanding high school basketball action. This is Blair Gray for Laurie May saying so long for now. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you once again on VPW Channel 11.